What is up, YouTube? Today, we're going to talk about medical record scanning. This is a job that is in demand or digitizing patient records from the actual paper format to the electronic format. So we're going to talk about this today. And one of those organizations and companies that I have had contact me that have been hiring my students. So we're going to learn about that right now. Today, we're going to be talking about EpiSource, a place where you could work scanning documents and getting paid for them. So what do you do at EpiSource? They have multiple jobs for chart retrieval specialists. So you can work from home, get their equipment, scan down documents and records and deliver. As you can see here, here's one in Washington State. Here's one in New York. Here's one in California. Some are part-time, some are full-time. So you do have to look at the individual job description. So what does a chart retrieval specialist do? And what are the requirements for this job? Let's take a look. I'm going to click on the job tab here. Chart retrieval specialist is responsible for retrieving medical records, both paper and electronic forms from various healthcare facilities on behalf of health plans. Looking for energetic self starters, solving problems, computer literate, quick pick up various software applications that they may train you in. So if you've used a scanner, used a printer, scan documents in, in a business environment, this is something that you can do. Pay to drive to work hourly, pay plus mileage, and the clock starts when you leave home. It's an independent position, experience in a variety of work offices if you've worked in a business environment. You can also gain experience in healthcare by doing this type of job. You're gaining hands-on and electronic health records. Schedule, not the same from week to week. So there is some variation and you can work three consistent days week to week. Independent position, keeping track of passwords and communications, checking your schedule and being punctual. Exploring, um, new EHR system. So there may be some new EHR you can learn. So stick with me and I can teach and train you online and a lot of my videos about some of this software. So I will be attaching some of that information for you. For those of you who are interested in what some of this software can look like and how it can work. So what are the requirements for scanning these documents in? High school or GED required very high attention to detail and scanning in accuracy, the ability to scan documents in consistently three full days a week. If you can navigate any type of EHR, it is a plus, but it is not required. Driver's license and insurance liability policy name is mandatory in certain cities um, and certain states, but do not apply to San Francisco, New York, or Washington, D.C., as we know of now. But there are multiple opportunities to make money and to grow with this company. It is a great opportunity to get your foot in the door, to start working in healthcare. Full training provided, remote and virtual training, and it is paid training. Tools provided, encrypted laptop, and it is an hourly pay. So let's take a look at how much people are being paid. I actually have a student that just started working here. I am in the East Coast area. She's in the Northern New Jersey area, and she is getting paid $21 an hour for her location. I have another student that's working in the Southern region who is making $20 an hour in the New Jersey, Pennsylvania area. So that is definitely something that we should consider and thinking about as far as location. So let's take a look at some salaries and I apologize for that alarm going off there. So let's take a look at what some of these salaries are like. Mm -hmm. 
So here we are at the salaries for EpiSource for the chart retrieval specialist. It's about $20 an hour. If you have other office or technical experience, you could make even more money. We have New Jersey, there's Rhode Island, there's New York. So if you're familiar with any particular areas, it could potentially be a job that you could get. And right now it looks like there's about 26 openings in this job arena or in the job area, Texas, New Mexico, California. So there are jobs all over the place for this particular job. So let me look in this general area to see what they have available on the East Coast in my location. So we have truck retrieval specialist at Episource in Philadelphia area. It looks like they have Fairless Hills, Pennsylvania. Again, it is showing a particular salary at the bottom at about $20 an hour, even for part-time work. No degree or require uh, degree is mentioned or is required. This is a great way to get your foot into the medical field. They will provide training and how they want their records scanned into their system paid to drive hourly plus mileage. So they are clocking your time when it comes to paying you on top of that with this particular job. It does say $20 an hour is estimated for part-time working as a chart retrieval specialist. There is another one in the, looks like the Trevos, Pennsylvania area. Burlington, they have nurse practitioners. So EpiSource looks like they hire all sorts of medical practitioners in their jobs. So let's look at some of the other job descriptions that they have and to see if they're the same depending on where you are. They are the same. Gain experience in the medical field. If you ask for assistance when needed, transferring and copying information. This may be something you have done in a non-medical related field, but you want to get into the medical field or use your current medical background in medical health care with documents or patient care, or maybe you wanted to transition into the medical field. This is a way to do it, working for this company called Episource, an average about $20 an hour to start to scan records. And if you're looking for a job in this area, please make sure you visit the description and the comments. Well, I will put links for jobs so that you can apply directly. So anybody, if you're looking for a job, whether it's California, California or Texas, New Mexico, Pennsylvania, or New Jersey, they have these medical record jobs all over the United States where you can retrieve records and scan them. The pay training, it is a great idea for you to get into the medical field as well as brush up on some of your medical skills for those of you who maybe have some medical training. Maybe you're certified to get paid a little bit more or maybe you've worked in an office in administrative and scanning files and documents into a computer. This could be the career for you. So keep that information in mind about these jobs. You will see they're listed on many places like LinkedIn, where you can apply directly. There are entry level jobs, as you can see here, and part time. There are some full time jobs available after they see how good you are with medical records. And as you see, if you have any other experience with any type of therapy or documentation or patient notes or anything, that's even an extra bonus on top of what you already know. Again, you do not need medical experience for this if you know how to copy and paste documents and upload and the ability to learn new software as they train from home and it is paid training, then this job is for you. Balancing time and completing priorities. 
So everyone, look into Chart Retrieval Specialist. It is a way to get your foot into the medical field along with there being some training involved. So just wanted to touch on those last key points. Pay to drive hourly plus mileage and independent position, experience working in an office environment, gain experience in the medical field. So you do not need to have healthcare experience to get a job here, but if you do, it could only help. You can also gain EHR, electronic health records experience, and your schedule may differ from week to week as long as you have three consistent days of work. Being punctual, checking your schedule, asking for assistance when needed. Creating folders and organizing them in the computer. Knowledge of downloading files. So if you've received a document or attachment and have downloaded it and saved it to your computer or desktop, this is going to be some of those skills that are going to be required in a job. The ability to learn software applications, demonstrate strong interpersonal skills, excellent computer skills, and you could get better at them, basic navigation, and document scanning is a plus. But again, document scanning and such is not required. I'm just going to show you a quick video of what record scanning looks like, and you will get an idea of really how simple this job can be. So here is medical record scanning using a demonstration of how medical records are scanned using some software. As you can see, he is using the medical records and using it on the equipment scanner, making sure the clean edges of this particular document appear on the scanner. And as they scan in, you will see an image of that document on the computer screen. And when you're looking at that image on the computer screen, you are looking to make sure that that image is nice and clean. You may get some medical records that are a little bit frayed or maybe a little chewed up at the end. You are looking for the cleanest edge to feed into your copier. And you're going to go step by step to make sure that those records are are scanned in nicely. So the gist is really taking those staples out. You see how he's unfolding those bent edges, making sure everything kind of goes in the scanner from the cleanest edge possible. This document here is a bit chewed up there, maybe from mail or maybe how it was received in the medical office. So it could be a potential problem when scanning it. You may need to tape it to another piece of paper, flatten it out, make sure those edges are clean and clear when it comes to scanning in your documents. Now, there may be some other steps that you may need to follow for your specific company and their particular software. This is just one example of an office that uses a remote type job to scan records in using a scanner so that you can see those records on the screen as they appear. You may be able to increase them. You may be able to enlarge the size of the particular document. But as you see, you can look at all of these documents that you scan in that might be in some sort of an envelope that go right directly to the scanner and smoothly and appear on our computer desktop screen. Many places will afford you the actual equipment that you're using to scan. It might be a flat bed type scan as you see here or an upright scanner where you're feeding documents into the scanner. But this is basically what a medical record scanner does. You're making sure those documents are clean and clear. I'm just gonna go over some of the key steps to what you actually have to look for as a medical record scanner. There may be a couple of phases that you have to look out for to make sure you have those ideal documents as you see here, like labels of medication when you are scanning as a medical records technician. 
So here are some great steps to scanning records. You may think it's just scanning. Oh, we can scan them in any way we want. It's just paper, but they're paying $20 an hour to make sure these documents are clear, clean, crisp, and they can be indexed. Depending on where you work, you may be working in the retrieval and just updating and scanning these documents in, making sure they're in the system, or you may be a part of actually looking at the documents that have been scanned to make sure you get a good, clean, clear picture. So this will explain that process of the things you need to look for when you're doing medical record scanner. I assure you a lot of these things will already be a part of your training. So you will train the way your facility tells you to train, but in general, all medical records are going to require these basic 10 steps when you are scanning them. As we present this 10 step guide to scanning your patient medical records. For purposes of this show, we're going to make the assumption that these records are going to be scanned to separate named PDF files and not necessarily uploaded into an EMR or your electronic medical record system. For the most part, we don't recommend a scanning of your back file right into your EMR. There are a number of reasons for this, which we're not going to get into during this presentation, but you could certainly call our offices for more. A very important thing there as medical record scanners, people think that records are scanned directly into the patient's medical record. They are not. They are scanned to a database and desktop. Then they are reviewed to make sure they are clean and clear. Once there is a clean and clear record uploaded, then they can be attached to the medical record by the medical record staff or the health information management staff. So these are those steps where you're going to be scanning records to a desktop or a computer or a flash drive or a save drive that your employer will provide for you. Details on this point. We hope you find the presentation helpful and we invite you to contact us at RSRS for free information and any further guidance we can offer. Let's get started. Step one, documentation. We recommend that you document your process for two reasons. Number one, it's required by the CMPA, and it's important to have on hand in the event of an audit. Number two, it'll help you to clarify the process and ensure that anyone on this project follows the exact same process. This documentation applies to everything from the prep to the indexing to scanning and quality control. Step two, quality control. Select your quality control process in advance. If you don't, you'll run the risk of things like skipped documents, illegible reproduction, and worse, misidentified documents. Mislabeled or misidentified documents in a medical record attributed to the wrong patient can be a very serious thing. So we recommend the use of the ANSI standard Z1.4 as your chosen quality control process. Step three, naming of the records. We recommend the naming of the records to four index fields, with at least one of those four being a unique field. So for example, the last name, the first name, date of birth, and the unique health card number. This information is generally available for match and merge from a data extract from either your billing or your EMR system. These index can also be incorporated into a barcode, which when placed on a separator sheet in front of each document that you're scanning, it will result in the automatic and electronic naming of your records, which is a huge time saver when you do it properly. Next, counting, step four. Counting pages at the batch, the document, and the page levels is the most basic way of confirming that you've caught each and every image. With this information, a matching of the paper and electronic page quantities will give you an important sense of assurance as you're going through your scanning. Step five, preparation or prep. Preparation is one of the most important elements of the entire scanning project. Good prep is an absolute prerequisite to good scanning. With good prep, scanning goes quickly and without interruption. Without good prep, scanning results in missed cheats, double feeds, unnecessary delays, obstacles, confusion, and a lot of stress. So here are some of the things that are addressed during prep. Things like staple removal, smoothing down those staple holes, post-it note repositioning, trimming of the paper edges, accounting for faded fax pages, faint or erased sections, copying certain pages first to increase the contrast, and accommodating black and white versus color pages. We recommend the use of a jogger once the rest of the prep is completed. This aligns all your pages in a group along a common edge, and it readies them for the ultimate feeding into your high input scanner. Now let's get to scanning. The scanning resolution 
should be set at 300 DPI for most projects, certainly for medical records. Any lower a setting and you run a greater risk of getting a less than optimal reproduction value. Regardless, you'll want to watch for clarity in documents such as ECGs, growth charts, and any other documents where contrasts in illustration are important. Though a fairly straightforward process, scanning is still one which requires a lot of attention. If something goes wrong, if the page is missed, if something isn't looking right, this is a good time to catch it, because it'll save you a ton of time later looking for it. This particular portion talks about ECGs. ECGs are an image that you would get of an electric heart recording. So I'm going to show you what an ECG looks like and how it might be fuzzy and you want to make sure you have a clean and clear copy. ECGs or EKGs are electrocardiogram. It is an electric heart record of a reading of the electricity going through your heart at any given moment. So I'm going to share a picture of an ECG. Just give me a moment to open it. So what you see here is a copy of an ECG. As you can see, there's a bunch of vertical lines on here, but then you have a bunch of squiggly lines. This is the electrical activity of your heart. When you scan these in sometimes, they're a little bit fuzzy and blurry. You can't really tell the difference between the straight lines and the squiggly lines or the waveforms that you see here. So when you see an ECG or an EKG, it should fairly look pretty clean like this. A lot of times when you get the document, it will be pink, but you will maybe have to scan it into black and white. And this is an example of how it should look. As they mentioned earlier, sometimes the patient documents do not have the patient's name listed out on the top. So they will show you how to create a barcode. So for all of the patient's information, you'll be able to place a sticker of the barcode at the top. So when it is scanned in, it'll recognize that document as being the patient's documents. So if the name doesn't appear, you're more likely going to be creating that barcode that they talked about. And I know it's in one of the videos that we show that kind of show labels off to the side. I'll rewind the video back to that portion so you could see what that barcode looks like. As you see here, there is a person there with like a, a test result and they have the top fed scanner, as I mentioned earlier, but a lot of high tech companies will have that very quick, fast scanner that you can use. She actually technically should be looking at the screen as the documents go in, but we're just going to say she's feeding these documents right now. And as she starts the scanning process is going to look at the screen to make sure they are scanning nicely and neatly. Pages should be fanned before you place them in the scanner to ensure that they're being properly fed. The scanning operator at our facility has both eyes on the screen at all times. The operator is watching the preview of each document as it passes through. To so just like the other video, a different type of scanner, this is a top loaded scanner and you see where the records are put in there. You're going to leaf through the pages, take those staples out and make sure everything is fine. These are general steps to medical record scanning. And again, you'll have paid training to Episource where you're going to be working for medical records to scan. They have remote training and all sorts of other types of training and being able to advance in their field. To ensure continuity while one hand is gently touching each page as it's fed one at a time from loaded batch and through the scanner. The tactile sensation of two pages mistakenly being fed into the scanner at once is unmistakable. Next is naming. Once scanned, you're able to incorporate the name and verify your records according to the fields that you previously established. These files should be saved to our drive and backed up as well. Remember that security of access is always a consideration. Step 9. Quality control. 
Quality control started at the beginning of the process with careful prep and counting of pages. It now continues and should be performed by an individual other than the one who performed the scanning. Using the ANSI standards that we suggested earlier, you're checking for the quality of the reproduction, the quantity of pages, a single patient name throughout, things like that. With the ANSI so there is an ANSI standard that you will learn about, the standard of how records should be labeled, how they should have the first name, the last name, a medical record number. That will all be a part of your training. We're gonna talk about what the ANSI standard is so you can get a basic idea of that. So here we are at our ANSI standards. They facilitate a standardized solution. The American National Standards Institute oversees standards and conformity assessment activities in the United States. So there is a uniform way that documents and medical records should be filed. As they showed earlier in the video, first name, last name, medical record number, or patient ID number should all be on their records. The and the ANSI or ANSI standards that are following, your job will allow you to know what that ANSI standard is and how you can follow along with that standard of compliance over and over again. So you're not making up standards to what you look for in records. The standard is the same over and over and over again. And once you are trained by the ANSI standard at your new job, maybe Episource, maybe Cyox Health, maybe United Health Group or Optum, any of those jobs, and there's so many more that use the ANSI standard on the way you should file, catalog, scan, and index medical records. So you'll learn more about the standards when you're on a job as part of your paid training. I just wanted to show you rather quickly of the barcodes. If you have a piece of medical information that is kind of in pieces, as you see here on our screen, your company will train you on how to create these barcodes here that you see on the right hand side of the screen. These barcodes can be put on the patient information as a way to index or state that this is the patient's record. So in the computer, you're going to put the patient's first name and last name and information. You're going to put it on the computer. It's going to create a label. And this barcode label, you can put on the back of the patient's record. It will not show the patient's name because that will be private with the barcode. But scanning it in, you'll be able to tell that this piece of documentation belongs to a particular patient. So we're going to continue with the quality control and some of the jobs. I will put the complete great video of this company in the comments. They put a great video together of all of the parts and pieces to what you would do in medical record scanning. I will also put the other video in so you could really see an explanation of how some of the scanners out there work. There was an OPEX scanner being used. I don't necessarily know what type of scanner you're going to be using on your job, but it might definitely be one of those things. You might be interested on how that workflow works. So these two videos will be linked down in the comments so you can watch them in their entirety to get the idea behind medical record steps in scanning. Step nine, quality control. Quality control started at the beginning of the process with careful prep and counting of pages. It now continues and should be performed by an individual other than the one who performed the scanning. Using the ANSI standards that we suggested earlier, you're checking for the quality of the reproduction, the quantity of pages, a single patient name throughout, things like that. With the ANSI standard in place, you'll know exactly how to perform this with a proven methodology that considers margins for error and the importance of your documents. Step 10. 
one last count and verification. Once you've done that, you can pat yourself on the back for a scanning job well done. Take a look at these different steps in the scanning process. You're going to ensure that these records are correct. RSRS.com looks like they have some really great information on how you could streamline your process for medical record scanning. Keep in mind, this is just to prep and give you a general idea behind what you should be doing as a medical records scanner technician or a chart retrieval specialist. Your job will train you in exactly these steps, but this is one of those organizations that helps people who scan medical records in, get organized, what to look for, and really how to run that scanning job quite smoothly. So what are you doing as part of your job? You are doing medical rec record scanning and digitization. In order for these records to get to the patient or a healthcare facility, someone needs to scan these records in. And as we talked about, I'm going to revisit that job one more time so you can see what the description is. But before I do that, Maybe you've worked at a medical records company, or maybe you've worked in an office or a mailroom or something before, and you've scanned in documents and records, not realizing that this could be a great job in getting your foot in the door in the healthcare field. Some jobs are hybrid as well, or maybe you like to work in an office environment. The idea behind scanning records and digitizing them could be appealing to you. So this is how it may look in a scanning records environment. Maybe you want to work remote, or maybe you want to work hybrid, part of the time in the office and part of the time at home. Our document scanning services combine records management expertise with cutting edge technology to digitize your paper records securely and efficiently. Our professional team will prep your documents before we pass them through our high speed production class scanner, which processes an average of 50,000 images per day. After the scan, we conduct 100% quality control before you receive the uploads. Our process is compliant with CJIS and HIPAA and you can be sure that your files will be kept secure every step of the way. For more information, call us at 1-800-803-1083 or visit us on the web at southwestsolutions.com. So Southwest Solutions is one of those organizations that does scanning, accurately scanning, just like Psyox, as well as chart retrieval with EpiSource. So giving you a lot of organizations that deal with records, either remote, hybrid, or in an office environment. So let's take a look at a few other chart retrieval jobs. We all know that some of my favorite search engines here are chart retrieval jobs on using Google search. They have one of the broadest searches out there to help you find jobs and where to look. Episource, which I've mentioned earlier, which is the crux of this video. There are also other organizations like Magnum Legal Services. Attorneys and lawyers also need records and documentation for legal cases, workers' compensation, for handling estates for patients and medical care. So many different areas if you've wanted to retrieve charts on the medical legal end. And one of my favorites, Psyox, is also hiring for chart retrieval specialists. And many of these jobs have locations all throughout the United States. So make sure you go to these companies. I have made a video on where you could go to apply to some jobs at Psyox. I will put the link to that video in the chat and in the description. I hope you've learned a lot about chart retrieval specialist. 
I hope you're definitely interested in getting this type of job. Remember, you can gain experience in healthcare, knowing how to file documents. You do not need a degree for this job. Being really efficient and making sure you can scan, you're taking those staples out, making sure those records are nice and clean is important. Full training is provided, remote virtual training, and it is paid training. Reimbursement for most expenses, parking, mileage, travel time to certain locations where you're going to be picking up these documents. This is a great job paying $20 an hour in most locations, possibly even more, depending if you are uh, working in a high demand area. My name is Carla from Carla's Shortcuts, Careers, and Coaching. So hopefully this is a great shortcut for you and you will like and subscribe. Thanks for joining me, everybody. Until next time, take care.